Helen of Troy, sometimes known as Helen of Sparta, is a prominent figure from Greek mythology. Her story centers around her elopement, or abduction, by the Trojan prince Paris, an event that triggered the famous Trojan War. Helen was the wife of Menelaus, the king of Sparta, and she was celebrated as the most beautiful woman in the world. Menelaus, in his quest to recover Helen, persuaded his brother Agamemnon, the king of Mycenae, to assemble a mighty army to lay siege to the formidable city of Troy. This laid the foundation for the Trojan War, a conflict that would go down in history. After the Greeks emerged victorious in the war, Helen returned to her home with Menelaus. However, in the eyes of the ancient world, Helen was often despised, viewed as a symbol of moral failure and the dangers of prioritizing desire over reason. In spite of her controversial reputation, Helen also had a divine aspect and was the focus of cults at various Greek locations, including Rhodes, Sparta, and Therapnae. Helen's family background is rooted in Greek mythology. She was the daughter of Zeus and Leda, the queen of Sparta and the wife of Tyndareus. In one version of the myth, Zeus, in the guise of a swan, seduced Leda, resulting in the birth of Helen. Another version states that her mother was the goddess Nemesis, the embodiment of retribution. In both variations, Helen was born from an egg in Sparta. Helen had several notable siblings, including the heroic twins Castor and Pollux, also known as Polydeuces and Clytemnestra, who would eventually become the wife of King Agamemnon of Mycenae. The story goes that, due to a snub to the goddess Aphrodite during a sacrifice, it was prophesied that Tyndareus' daughters would become infamous for their adultery. To protect Helen's marriage to Menelaus, Tyndareus had all the Greek leaders swear an oath to recognize her as Menelaus' rightful wife and to safeguard her. This oath would have far-reaching consequences during the Trojan War. Menelaus and Helen had four children, one daughter, Hermione, and three sons, Plisthenes, Aetheolas, and Marophius. Helen was renowned for her exceptional beauty, often described in the works of ancient Greek poets. She was referred to as fair-haired Helen by Hesiod and described with epithets like Helen of the lovely hair, white-armed Helen, and Helen, queen among women by Homer. However, her actions would also earn her the moniker Hateful Helen. Her story took another twist when the legendary Athenian hero Theseus captured her as a child and entrusted her care to his mother. Helen's brothers, the Dioscuri, later rescued her, launching an invasion of Attica to retrieve her. Theseus was compelled to flee to the Aegean island of Skyros. Even at a young age, Helen's beauty seemed to bring her both attention and trouble. However, the most pivotal moment in Helen's life was her involvement in the legendary judgment of Paris. At the wedding of Peleus and Thetis, Eris, the goddess of strife, sparked a dispute among the goddesses by offering a golden apple to the most beautiful. Paris, a Trojan prince, was chosen to judge between three goddesses, Athena, Hera, and Aphrodite. Each goddess offered Paris a unique inducement. Paris ultimately chose Aphrodite, who promised him the most beautiful woman in the world, Helen. Paris' visit to the house of Menelaus while on a diplomatic mission to the Greeks ultimately led to his encounter with Helen. The two fell in love and eloped, setting the stage for her transformation from Helen of Sparta to Helen of Troy. The circumstances of her departure from Sparta are shrouded in ambiguity. While some depictions show her as a willing participant in her elopement, others suggest that Paris forcibly took her away. When the Greeks came to claim her back, the story took various forms. One version suggests that she willingly returned, while another indicates that she was reluctant to reunite with Menelaus. The tale is rich in complexity, with different artworks and literature offering diverse interpretations of the events. Regardless of the nuances, most ancient Greeks viewed Helen as a figure of shame and moral wrongdoing. Even though Aphrodite, the goddess of love, Ares, the god of war, and Paris all shared the blame, Helen was often held accountable for the tragic consequences of the Trojan War. And the story of the Trojan War, was one of the most famous tales from Greek mythology, is chiefly recounted by Homer in his epic poem, The Iliad. Homer's work, believed to have been composed in the 8th century BCE, is based on older oral traditions and is considered the primary source of this legendary war. In Homer's rendition, the war is set in the 13th century BCE during the Aegean Bronze Age. The conflict unfolded at the city of Troy, located in what is now modern-day Turkey. Archaeological findings support the existence of a prominent city, 
which is widely believed to be the historical Troy. Among its many historical layers, Troy VI, dating from approximately 1750 to 1300 BCE, is thought to be the most plausible candidate for the Troy associated with Helen and the epic conflict. The war, according to myth, was driven not only by the abduction of Helen but also by economic factors such as trade, resources, and colonies, with the Greek king Agamemnon aiming to secure vast riches. The Trojan War is depicted as a ten-year-long siege at the city of Troy, which was known for its formidable walls. Although the war mainly consisted of a siege, there were also periods of open warfare on the plains outside the city. Priam, the king of Troy, and his son Hector treated Helen with respect during the war. Hector, in particular, blamed Paris, Helen's lover, as the cause of the conflict. In this era, Paris and Helen had four children, three sons, Bunomus, Aganus, and Idaeus, and a daughter named Helen. Tragically, all three sons met their demise when a roof collapsed during the war's chaotic conclusion. An iconic moment of the war is when Menelaus, Helen's husband, and Paris engage in a one-on-one -on -one combat, with Helen promised to the victor. Menelaus was initially victorious, but Paris was saved by Aphrodite, who transported him from the battlefield to safety. The Greeks ultimately triumphed through the cunning use of the Trojan horse. This colossal wooden structure concealed Greek warriors who infiltrated the city, allowing the Greek army to enter and conquer Troy. The myth holds that the Trojans were either slaughtered or enslaved, serving as a harsh reminder of the consequences of adultery. In some versions of the story, Menelaus initially drew his sword with the intention of killing Helen upon their reunion, but he changed his mind upon seeing her exposed breasts. In one Greek play, Menelaus is portrayed as a somewhat simple character more concerned with Helen's physical appearance after the lengthy siege than with her unfaithfulness. Regardless of the version, the tale embodies the theme of forgiveness and reconciliation. Following the fall of Troy, Menelaus and Helen embarked on a journey back to Greece, with stops at various places along the way, as recounted in Homer's Odyssey. Their voyage had its share of challenges, including a shipwreck off the coast of Crete due to a storm. Upon reaching Egypt, they spent several years there. However, unfavorable winds hindered their return home. During their journey, they visited Cyprus and the Phoenician city of Sidon, renowned for its fine textiles and silverware. As they continued their travels, they explored North Africa, described as a land of abundance, and journeyed to Ethiopia, where Menelaus accumulated a treasure trove. In Egypt, they also had a memorable encounter with Proteus, known as the Old Man of the Sea, a sea god who shared his wisdom. These Mediterranean escapades, along with the detours of Paris on his way back to Troy, are thought to be a mythical explanation for the Bronze Age trade networks connecting Mycenaean Greece, Phoenicia, and Egypt. They also explain the exchange of artistic and pottery ideas. Finally, Helen and Menelaus experienced favorable winds that enabled their return to Sparta. Their reunion with their daughter, Hermione, led to her marriage to Orestes, the son of Agamemnon, uniting the kingdoms of Mycenae and Sparta under a single ruler. Despite Helen's sometimes negative portrayal in Greek literature, she was venerated as a deity at specific locations in ancient Greece. Scholars generally agree that Helen was initially a goddess and later became a semi-divine human figure. It's possible that myths of her abductions were created to explain her temporary absences from her cult sites. Cults dedicated to Helen existed in places like Rhodes, Attica, and Sparta. The cult of Helen was particularly prominent in Sparta, where she held various symbolic roles. She represented the transition from adolescence to bride, embodying the concepts of a maiden evolving into a bride. Additionally, she symbolized the adult married woman and the concept of sisterhood. In Rhodes, Helen was associated with fertility, trees, and vegetation. In Sparta, she represented qualities of erotic desire and beauty, similar to the goddess Aphrodite. One of the earliest sanctuaries dedicated to Helen was located at Therapnae, near Sparta. In this context, she was seen as the embodiment of an adult married woman. At Therapnae, there was a temple where offerings were made to Helen, believed to bestow alluring qualities on the faithful. According to Herodotus in his histories, the third wife of King Ariston was said to have been miraculously transformed from great ugliness to extraordinary beauty due to divine intervention by Helen at Therapnae. Another account from the 2nd century CE Greek historian and geographer Pausanias, 
found in his description of Greece, mentions that the locals believed Menelaus and Helen were buried at Therapnae. Their tomb, constructed around 700 BCE near a 15th century BCE Mycenaean palace, featured a large rectangular structure made of ashlar blocks. It had a small temple and was situated on a mound with a ramp leading to it. Excavations have confirmed that offerings were made at this site, and it remained in use until the 1st century BCE. Helen's story and the Trojan War were popular themes in classical literature and the arts. For instance, she appeared in Aeschylus Agamemnon and Virgil's Aeneid. Euripides, a 5th century BC tragedian, included Helen in his Trojan Women, where she defended her actions in a trial before the captured women of Troy. She claimed to have been manipulated by the gods and unable to escape her fate. In another of Euripides' plays titled Helen, she never actually reaches Troy but remains in Egypt, as described by Herodotus. In the realm of visual arts, Helen's story is depicted on red figure pottery from Apulia and Campania during the 4th century BCE. Scenes of Helen's abduction by Theseus can be found on Attic red figure pottery from the Archaic period. She is also a common subject in both red figure and black figure pottery scenes from the classical period, showing various moments in her story, including her being led away by Paris, domestic scenes, and her interactions with Menelaus. The story of Helen continued to captivate audiences throughout antiquity and for centuries afterward. During the Renaissance, Artists like Tintoretto and poets like Christopher Marlowe delved into her tale. Marlowe, in particular, wrote the famous lines that continue to immortalize Helen, the face that launched a thousand ships and burnt the topless towers of Ilium.